Welcome to Let's Go, where we help the leaders of high growth entrepreneurial companies take those companies to the next level. In previous episodes, we've talked a lot about talent as a company looking to acquire, hire, attract, retain talent. Today, we're going to take a slightly different bent. Today, we're going to talk about the candidate's perspective. And if you're a candidate or executive in transition, what do you need? What are you looking for? How can we best help your career? And as a byproduct, if you're a company looking to attract said executive in transition, how can you best leverage that to help you build your own company? Today's job market is white hot. We've all heard the words great resignation or some variation thereof, where people are voting with their feet, looking to leave their current opportunity and looking for something more impactful, something more meaningful. So the best person I could find to talk about that is Patty Boyle. Patty is the Amazon best-selling author of Transform Your Job Search, Turning Fear into Opportunity. She's an executive career coach, a damn good one. She's also a John Maxwell certified facilitator and speaker, and she's a very successful entrepreneur in her own right. She has empowered thousands of people for their job search and their career transitions. And I'm very excited to partner with Patty and I'm very excited that Patty is joining me today on Let's Go. Patty, thank you so much for joining me. Well, Kurt, thank you for having me. And I'm just so excited today to get to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Uh, something that I've done for 30 years is help C-suite executives in transition. And when I say transition, I mean either they're unemployed, they're unhappily employed, they're underemployed, or they're just today anticipating changes in their companies and wanting to look for more fulfillment in their lives. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about two things. One is the market is so white hot for, for people. It's, it's amazing how many companies are hiring and trying to attract uh, uh, people. The other is as I said before, with the great resignation, people are looking for something more impactful about their careers. So let's talk a little bit about both of those, if you don't mind. Tee us up. Okay. So what you're saying about the market being so hot, I, I just said for 30 years, this has been my favorite thing to do is work with executives in transition. I have never in my entire career seen it so hot. Uh, just as an example, September 15th, I run an executive in transition weekly mastermind. I have participants from all over the country in that. I had 18 on September 15th. As of the week of Thanksgiving, I only have four left. 12 have full-time jobs, two have interim to perm jobs. And we are talking that these are all VP, C-suite, uh, people, coming from a variety of industries, uh, Fortune 500 companies, private equity, so forth and so on. Well, I know that that must be very, very meaningful for you to be making such an impact. And I know it's just 14 people in the last two months. I know it's uh, dozens of people for the entire year. So you get, you're doing good work. Thank you. Well, this, this has really been exciting because I have to say that the people I work with tend to be heavy CEOs, president, COO, CFO, CTO candidates. And when we look at it, if you look at the job market as a triangle, they're at the top in terms of salary, in terms of experience. And so they're at the top of that triangle where there are fewer jobs. And I compare the last couple months with March when COVID and the lockdown and some of them were ready to go out and have, I, for instance, I had one candidate who had an interview set up the week that the COVID lockdown in Dallas, San Francisco and New York. And so for a couple months last year, it was like the somebody had pulled the rug out from under them. But by June, um, it, it was keeping them motivated, keeping them going and, and teaching them some new skills, like being able to teach them how to interview like we're talking today on Zoom. Love it. So, Patty, is now actually a good time for somebody who is currently employed to be looking for that next career opportunity? Maybe they, they, they want to do something more impactful. Is now a good time or, or bad because it's so crowded out there? Now, now is an excellent time because I don't think it's so crowded out there. In fact, I see exactly the opposite. Uh, companies are looking for leaders uh, with how, how our world has changed in the last 18 months. They're looking for leaders. They're looking for leaders that can manage change, can manage um, uncertainty. 
I also see that some people just are fearful about coming back into the market. They don't want to go back to work for some reason. So if I'm looking at it, I see there's less competition. Uh, The other thing is that maybe geographically people want to stay in an area because they have kids in high school or for whatever reason. A number of the people I work with, uh, for instance, I have an executive in Dallas. His re- he will be remote, so he can stay in Dallas with his kids, uh, but working in Ireland, New York, and San Francisco are his regions. I think that's one great thing about uh, that we've learned in the last 18 months is that we can have even executives working remotely, uh, and, and it's a great way to attract great talent if you don't make them move. So that's a great tip. Exactly. And and I think two things have happened. Companies have put in the systems to make this possible. And and we've all learned to work remotely. Okay. So I'm a candidate or executive looking to make a move. Uh, What are the, what's the next steps for me? Well, I always, um, in my book, I put a lot of time into this. First step is to know yourself. And if you're in a company and you're thinking about, well, maybe this would be a good time. I have a lot of clients right now that are anticipating over the next couple of years, organizational change, either their companies are being sold, but I'm also seeing that they're seeing because of AI technology, the departments are being consolidated in their company potentially, and they may be out of a job. So it's a good time to get ahead of that. Uh, to anticipate this and to really start looking at knowing thyself. What is your purpose? What is your why? Uh, Simon Sinek has a number of good YouTubes out there and and books out there on know your why. Uh, What makes you unique? What What is your market differentiator? When I start working with clients, I start telling them, I know this sounds impersonal, but you want to start thinking of yourself, you are the product. So what is your superpower? Uh, what, what is your North Star? What, what are you looking to do? And really start looking at what are my interests? What are my skills? What are my strengths? But let's just say it's a CFO. So there's Most companies of any size have a CFO. What makes me different? What makes me unique? What is my unique market differentiator? And and to really start reflecting on that. So that's the first part. Interesting. I have a lot of conversations, as you do, with people who have, uh, the company's been sold or for whatever reason, they're now on the market after 10, 15, 20 years. And usually they're lamenting the fact that they're on the market. And the first thing I tell them is, look, let's look at this as an opportunity. You're mid-stage in your career. You've had a lot of success, but you've got a lot of uh, of years ahead of you. This is a gift. This is an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself or do what really is impactful for you or is is, uh, in line with your purpose. So it sounds like you you take a similar approach. Well, well, to reinvent themselves. And, you know, I have been doing this so long and there used to be times that I would manage major downsizings that major organizations, particularly a lot of the oil companies would be laying off 15,000 people on one given day. And people would say, are you George Clooney? And I'd go no, and <laughs> up in the air and I'd say, no, I'm exactly the opposite. I go in there and, t- and first help the companies to realize that these people are their greatest assets and how they treat their people leaving. But I never felt sad about it because I wasn't in the, I was on the side where I got to see them when they actually found more joy and fulfillment in their careers, where they maybe found more work-life balance, where they increased their salary, where they went back to school. Uh, When we look at engaged employees in today's workforce, uh, only about one third actually really love what they do and wake up every Monday and want to go make it a better place. 51% of workers, and this is according to Gallup's um, State of American Workplace, aren't actually engaged. They're just, they're just there. And then you look at the 18% that are actively disengaged. So um, when we look at this, I always feel it's such an opportunity because I get to work with them when that particularly 18% can be engaged. Life is short, people. Go do something exactly. and be engaged, be passionate, fulfill yourself. Oh, wow. That's powerful stuff. So, okay, I've found my why. I've got to know a little bit more about my purpose. Tell me a little bit about what I would do to uncover the right opportunities for me. Well, then you have to consider 
after you've reflected and found your why, there's two pieces to this. This is exactly like a marriage. There is a husband and there is a wife. Well, there, there is you as the product, but it's next uncovering what companies will hire me. What companies have a need for what I, I what is my, my superpower? And you can do this by researching. I mean, sitting idly at night and maybe looking on LinkedIn or looking at Indeed or looking at the job boards. But I think the best way to look at this is that the first place I start to work with my clients who, you know, are secretly looking on the side for something new is I tell them map your network. And the the best way to map your network is first to start looking at who you've worked for, who's worked for you, who you've worked with, what companies are they in? For instance, right now, and um, I won't disclose exactly this person's title, but I'm working with uh, one of our directors of national intelligence in Washington, DC, who wants to go into the public sector. Well, we have to really look at his, him as a product. What is his strengths? What is his interest? But to pivot, what companies are going to hire him? And there are companies that are going to hire him in cybersecurity and security. And he has global experience and project management experience. So this is just an example. It's a little bit of a pivot, but you really have to really talk to the people. And so where do I start with him? I said, I want you to start talking to people who have left the government that you know, and go to where are they at? And all of a sudden, oh, one's at Facebook and one's at Starbucks and one's over global. Uh, and maybe, you know, I could go into cities that, ha- you know, are having border crises. And I'm like, so, so you really want to start looking at where are those companies? And I can't think, I'm, I'm an extrovert, as you can probably tell, but knowing, knowing your network, talking to people, getting out there. In fact, I call this process informational interviewing, and I actually teach a targeted approach to this, to getting out and talking. And when you're still working, one, you have to be discreet because the last thing you want uh, your company to know or your boss particularly is that you're looking. But two, you have to make time. So with the people I'm working with, they have 50, 60 hours that they're working. And it's more difficult actually for them to find a job than the ones I work with that are unemployed, who I say, make this your full-time job. (laughs) 10 people you talk to a week, right? You know, I say, "What, what is realistic? Can you talk to three people? Where are the professional organizations? So it's all about knowing you, but equally important, knowing who who would have a need for what your skills are. It's who you know. It's such a valuable lesson, no matter what stage of your career that you're in. Well, I I know you know this, but um, most jobs are found through who you know. And, you know, you would think with now the job boards and technology and the internet and LinkedIn, but I... 80% 80% of jobs are still in the hidden job market, meaning people hire people who know them. 20% and you're in the recruiting are in what I call intermediaries, which means that, that, that a lot of my executives do have to go through executive recruiting searches, but that's only 20%, 80%. And I would say if I would look at the 14 that got hired with the exception of one in the last two months, Every one of them found them by somebody they knew. So I have a process first, as I mentioned, the first thing to do, well, first is to really have a targeted plan as to what companies would probably have a need for you. And then start mapping your network and you look at who do you know? And these are the easiest people. These are people who pick up the phone. Uh, you know, they know and love you <laughs> and, and, and they're easy, but you can't just call them up and say, hey, do you have a job? One, you have to be pretty clear and specific about use the product, your superpower, what you're looking to do. Uh, s- second thing is that uh, you want to research you, the person, you want to be prepared and you want to ask them for 20 minutes of time. And you want to be respectful. It's really been easier for people now with Zoom to say, hey, can I talk to you for 20 minutes? 
So, so you go to them and you have a positioning statement. This is what I'm looking to do. And knowing uh, exactly what you want to do. I am looking for a, let's just say, CIO position in a mid-market company. I would prefer to be in the, let's just say, Richmond, Virginia area. And I, the type of industries I'd be interested in. And you really kind of want to look at where you've been. So maybe you want to say medical or pharmaceutical or I have been in eight industries. So, so you start looking at the industries, the size of the organizations I'm looking for. And then what is the culture? Uh, th- this is where you talked about it at the beginning, where it's a good time for people to start looking, particularly if they're not as engaged or there's a lot of organizational unhealthiness in their organization, what is the culture? And, you know, you're able to find the culture. I can do that. And in my book, Transform Your Job Search, I have a whole chapter on the know yourself. And I talk about some of the assessments that will help you to look at your values and culture. Some are free and, you know, some are a a little more pricey. And, And then I always tell them at the end, after they've described and had their positioning statement of what they want to do, you do not want, first you be mindful, uh, you've given me 20 minutes, they come back all excited, they go, oh, they talked to me for an hour, they were so glad to see me, particularly during COVID, right? And, but you be mindful of 20 minutes and you say, we're worth it, you know, we're getting to the 20 minutes. And at the end, I always say, think three, Kurt, who else? Given what I'm telling you, would you suggest, who would you suggest I speak to? And typically, the people they know can get them to bridge people. And then, the, and would, Kurt, would you make an, inter, would you mind making an introduction? And if, and they will tell you, yeah. And, and what kind of introduction would you like me to make? Well, if virtually you could just say, hi, this, this is so-and-so, a good friend of mine, looking for a position as, and and then they can set up another informational interview with that individual. It will typically take getting from the person you know to a bridge person into people who can actually make the decisions, the hiring manager. The other thing that is really important in these is to be mindful of how can I help you? This is not a one-way street. So, I just really appreciate, I know it's been a year since we talked, but I'm just glad we got together. What can I do for you? I am glad you said that because what I encourage people to do is two things when they go to these types of meetings. I generally tell them not to bring a resume. I'm not sure how you feel about that. Great. Okay. Because if for me, if you bring me a resume now, all of a sudden I'm I'm beholden to you to try to help you find a job. But if I'm to help you connect to other people, and there's an interest in them to offer you a job. Great. But I'm not, I don't want a job. I want, I want to connect you. And the other thing is I always encourage them. Some of the best networking tips I got as a young professional from a, from a friend was always ask in that meeting, what can I do for you? Because right. then it becomes a truly a two-way street in that initial meeting versus a, this guy's just looking for help for himself or herself. Well, and I think there's even one step past that it's to be sincere and to be intentional about really wanting to help the person. Now, I'd like to go back to something you said about the resume. First of all, I have a, a rule like you do not go on that ATS machine. This is for my C-suite executives. Right. You do not go on that ATS machine unless there is no way in the world you can get in there that you have exhausted every possibility. And we've got such a great tool now, LinkedIn. So I can find out that I know so-and-so who knows so-and-so and and really pay attention. We can go on the internet. We can look at the website. We can look at, we can get directly to the person. But you're not going there with a resume looking for a job. You're going there looking for information, looking for connections. And when you get to that third part where it's somebody that's a hiring manager, You don't want a resume because you want to go in there and find out what their needs are. And if that individual says, if she says to you, well, could you get me a resume? You get home and you have enough information and you target that resume to her, his or her needs. So Patty, 
You've got 30 seconds. Tell me the top three tips that you would provide to a candidate or an executive in transition. Um, there's three parts to the job search. First part we talked about that you see that I think is very important. It's know yourself, have a project plan. Okay. Second part is... Well, well I, we just talked about you and I. We tell them, don't take a resume. I do tell them to have um, a resume with them just in case they need it. But yeah. don't pull it out unless asked. Yeah. Uh, you, it, it, It's imperative, particularly if you're looking for your resume has to match you as the product. Your resume has to be very professional. It has to stand out. It is your marketing brochure. It gets 30 seconds. So while I say you don't need a resume, you need a resume. You need a professional bio. And in today's world, the most important thing is you need a LinkedIn presence. So that's the second piece. Have all your job search tools. And then the third piece is the execution. And this sometimes is the hardest part because if I were to look at what my job is, is it's teaching sales training to non-sales people. Uh, the people I work with have been very effective CEOs or presidents or CFOs or CTOs or CHROs. If they wanted to be doing sales, they would have been out doing sales. That is not uh, their strong suit. That's not what they're going to come up when they look at themselves. So it's the execution. It's going to networking events. And it, it's very difficult for people who are introverted, who don't like to do that, but it's getting to the right professional events. It's getting out and talking to people. It's getting very focused on how many calls am I going to make this week and having a system in place. It, it's also today, um, I train them on how to be on Zoom um, because it takes a lot more charisma to come over Zoom. And most of interviewing, particularly the first parts of it these days, I don't know we'll ever go back to a lot of face-to-face -face interviews until we get down to the final three candidates. I, what do you think? I mean, you're on the side of the recruiting. I think you're right. I think we've learned that you can do a lot of business uh, virtually this way, which is, which is great in a number of ways. I will ultimately want to meet face-to-face -face, uh, with key execs, but this, most of it, as you said, can be done via Zoom. So to let's talk about the three tips from Patty Boyle herself. Number one is know your why, know yourself, know your purpose. Number two, have all the tools, all your job search tools, resume, bio, LinkedIn, all that put together and prepared and wrapped up in a pretty bow. And number three is execute. You're going to have to sell yourself. No one's going to sell yourself better than you. And uh, you need to be able to uh, get out there and do the work it takes to find your next opportunity. Exactly. Well, Patty, let's flip the script just a bit. And so let's say I'm a business leader looking to try to retain my key leaders who are reading the same things all these other folks are reading. They may be considering something more impactful or may be considering their own great resignation. How do I keep my key people? Well, I, you know, we always have to start with compensation package. So the compensation package has to be fair and equitable and competitive uh, with, with the competitors. Uh, yet I find that people leave companies, most of the time we know this, they, they leave the company, they leave the manager. Uh, so, so it's making sure that they are working in their strong suit, what they love doing. How can you provide fulfillment? How can you make it an engaging workplace? I can't emphasize for leaders communication, 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 um, and communication. Just always knowing your employees and knowing what their needs are. And, and granted, we have things that not maybe somebody doesn't want to do, but the more we can have them working where they, where they are in their why, they're in their strong suit, they feel that the company is part theirs, I believe we can keep them engaged. I love it. And sometimes the best move for them, for their careers, for their livelihood, for their, uh, their own passion and purpose is for them to move on. And I think as leaders who are conscious about that, we need to be open to that and, and recognize that sometimes the best opportunity for our, our employees is to move on. Um, well, and, and I'll add on that because a number of the people, I, I mean, I work with people, I, I do executive coaching with people who are still in companies and that's the ideal that they start looking, anticipating before, and they're not shocked. But I, I, a lot of my career has been working with a lot of unemployed people, and they come out of situations where they ride out 
for two or three years in situations where there's a lot of change or there's a new leader or there's a merger and an acquisition or private equity takeover. And, and to be quite honest, one of the first steps for some of the unemployed is to get through the battle wounds of it. I mean, they come out of some of these companies really beaten down and it takes them like six months, some even longer to just get through that piece that they can start focusing on the first piece, which is who are they and what can they do for someone else? Patty, we're running out of time. So I'd like to ask, is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, whether whether you're unemployed or underemployed or unhappily employed, you know, you said it before, life is too short. We work at minimum, particularly when we're talking about C-suite executives, 50 hours minimum. And at the end of our lives, we, we need to be looking about where can we be? The word you used was impactful. Where can we be happy? Where can we be in joy? Wow. Uh, life is short. Be impactful. Let's go. That's why we titled Let's this go. video. Let's go, baby. Hey, Patty, thank you so much for joining me today. You are doing great work and you're a special person. Keep up the great work. You're impacting and empowering uh, thousands of people and you, uh, you should be proud. Thank you, Kurt. I, I just really appreciate the opportunity if I can help one person to just be impactful and love their career. Awesome. That's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for joining us at Hire Better. Our purpose is to impact lives by connecting and empowering good people to build great companies. And we hope we're empowering you or inspiring you with this podcast series. And uh, we're really excited to help you continue your journey. Until next time, let's go. Thank you.